Hi, I'm Heather North from heatherscreativeblessings.com. I am here with a blog hop for Katherine Fuller Designs. Her new foundations box is coming very soon, like in the next couple of days. And it's the Everything Every Stamper Needs box. From stamps to ink to paper to block, it has it all. So I'm going to actually show you two cards. One is just a one layer card and then I stepped it up a little bit with some sponging and a second layer. I'm working on my Stampin' Up! grid mat, but you can just take some scrap paper and um, use just a hard, firm tabletop or countertop. And the cardstock, this is included in the kit. It's a nice, thick, bright white cardstock, smooth cardstock. And I just use my clear block to press that seam. It's already pre scored, but using the clear block to add some pressure helps it to lay really flat. The stamp set I'm going to be using is called For Everything, and I'm just going to pull the kite out of this stamp set and the coffee mug and a couple of other images, but I'm going to use that kite in a totally different way than it was intended. I have, Since I do have my grid mat, I'm using it to kind of line up my paper so that I can stamp this mug in the center, top center of my paper. Um, I'm going to use Fiesta Blue. I'm going to do what's called second generation stamping or stamping off. First I stamp on my grid mat and then I stamp on my paper. So actually, if you're using scrap paper, just stamp off on a piece of scrap paper, copy, printer paper, and then stamp directly onto your cardstock without re-inking and you'll get that lighter image. Next I'm going to take the kite and I'm just going to ink up the string. I'm going to ink it up in this midnight ink. It's a permanent dye ink from Catherine Puller Designs. It's a very nice dark ink. And I'm just inking up the tail and the strings of the kite. And I'm going to again do the second generation. I stamped on my scrap paper and then I'm going to stamp it directly onto my mug. I'm going to ink it up again, just that string, stamp off, and then turn my block so that this, this is kind of supposed to be steam rising up from the mug. Um, so that steam kind of just rises up in a couple of different ways. And you can practice on your scrap paper to get it just like you like it. Again, inking up just the string, stamping off, turning my kite, and stamping onto the mug. Sorry about the focus issues. Isn't that cute? So it really looks like um, maybe even little marshmallows and steam coming off of the mug of cocoa. In this stamp set, there's several little images that will all fit onto the coffee mug, including two snowflakes. I am going to be using the smaller one today, and I'm going to use this clear block as included, this round block. It's got finger grips, which make it easier to grip. Now, with the smaller images, you want to tap very lightly, because otherwise you'll end up with ink all over your block. I'll show you that a little bit later, because, you know, it happens. Um, and you might just want to play with how you hold it with these tiny images. This block was designed to fit every image in the stamp set. So um, it fits the bigger ones as well as the little ones, but with the little ones you might have to play with how you hold it. For my sentiment, I wanted to do a shadow effect, and almost any sentiment would work with this particular mug, but I'm going to go with the warm wishes. I thought it went well with the little steam. And again, I'm going to do that stamping off for second generation. So I stamp it once on my scrap paper, and then I will go to my cardstock, there we go, without re-inking. Sorry about the focus issues. And you just get this light blue. And then I'm going to come in with my midnight ink and I'm going to go just slightly above that blue stamped image. And again, I, I know I keep saying this, but practice. Pull out these stamps and stamp every single image in the set just to see how it works, see how you like it, see how it stamps out. The black ink will definitely stain your stamps, but the ink is formulated so that the colored ink will not pick up that black underneath it. So now I'm going to take another piece of cardstock that was included in the kit, and this is my stepped up version of the card. So this is card number two, and I wanted to create another layer. So I'm just going to cut this cardstock um, first three by three inches, and then this piece is two and a half inches this way, and I'm going to turn it because I want it to be two and a half by two and a half. So I'm basically just cutting half an inch off of the long side. And that little skinny piece, you could stamp some of the sentiments from um, these stamp sets onto a, a, even a different card or this card. 
For my stepped up version, I wanted to do some sponging. So I'm going to take the Fiesta Blue ink and um, I'm going to use my mini Distress ink blending tool. You could use a sponge, um, you can use whatever you have on hand. You can also do ink swiping direct to paper and just swipe the ink across your page. But I really like the smooth, light blending look I get with this ink blending tool. So I get some ink on my sponge very lightly and then I lightly start off my paper on that scrap paper and move it onto my card stock. And I have to say, it blends pretty well. I, I like the end result. Now if you have trouble with ink blending, what I'm going to do for this card is perfect for you because after I um, blend all this ink on here and the ink dries, I'm going to come back and stamp snowflakes. So you're never even going to know if it's splotchy or whatever on the outside. You can keep adding more ink until you get it the color that you want. If you want it darker, just keep going. While that ink dries, I'm going to work on my two and a half by two and a half inch square. And again, I'm going to do that shadow inking. This time I'm just going to go full on. This is Miss You and I just went full on with the Fiesta Blue ink and then I'm going to do the Midnight ink on top of it. Just slightly on top and just slightly to the left. I love the shadow stamping. I'm going to do the same thing with second generation here. I'm going to stamp off on my scrap paper and then go directly to my cardstock. Hold it for a couple of seconds. Whoops. <laughs> stuck but it came right off. Um, I'm using an absorber to clean my stamps. You can use a baby wipe or a damp paper towel. You can even rub them under the sink. The absorber is from the chamois. Uh, it's actually from the auto parts store. The chamois you use to dry your car. I just cut those into little pieces and I get them wet with water and it works great for cleaning my stamps. Now what I'm doing here, a little bit different than last time, is I'm stamping it. I did do the second generation where I stamped on scrap paper, and then I stamped on my cardstock, but then I stamped again a couple of times, not having it exactly lined up, and that adds just a little bit of a shadow and a little more like steam. It's hard to see on camera, but in person it added a really nice touch. Now this For Everything stamp set has two sizes of hearts. I used the big heart on my first one, and I'm going to try the second heart here on my second card, and I love it. It's just so sweet. This is the rock and red, and when you first stamp it, it does stamp really dark, but as the ink dries, it tends to lighten up. And here I'm going to add my snowflakes. I put them both on the block at the same time. And each time I stamp, I'm moving my block just a little bit so that I get the snowflakes in different positions. I'm also stamping those snowflakes off of the cardstock um, so they're not all directly on. And you don't have to do the center because the center is going to end up being covered. I'm just going to take some double-sided adhesive. This is from Crafter's Companion. I accidentally dropped it before I meant to and it got stuck in the wrong place. So I just added a little bit more and centered it onto my blue panel. And then I'm going to add some more adhesive and center it on my card and then my cards will be done. I am going to be doing cards all week long using the products in this box, so you'll want to come back, maybe subscribe to my YouTube channel to see the other videos I'm doing, but I'll have cards without videos on my blog as well. And speaking of my blog, make sure you go over there and comment on today's post and all the other posts on the blog hop, because Catherine is giving away one a box today, one box tomorrow. I believe she might even be giving the third box away on Wednesday. So if you want to get one of these boxes for free, go ahead and comment for your best chance to win. I will see you in my next video. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you have a great day. Bye.